Start game now. The Detroit Tiger Mini Helmet is making its debut today because we're going to talk baseball like Pete Rose baseball for the Atari 2600 with a box that features a picture of Charlie Hustle himself, but they scrubbed all the logos off his uniform. Let's hear it for trademarks, everybody. Now, I bought this brand new just a little while ago and I opened it up, but the cartridge didn't look like new. It had this weird bubbling and the glue's coming through. So it just goes to show that even though you buy a new game, a new old game, it may not look that new when you take it out, but it plays like new. So let's go ahead and take Pete Rose Baseball, pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system and find out how the 2600 version plays today. Let's go to the game. Pete Rose Baseball was published by Absolute Entertainment for the Atari 2600 and carries a copyright year of 1988. It was programmed by Alex DeMio, who also programmed the 2600 version of Title Match Pro Wrestling, which I reviewed in episode 136. Pete Rose Baseball is a baseball game for one or two players. Each game is self-contained and Pete Rose merely serves as the cover boy for the box of manual as he does not appear in the game himself. When playing the computer, there is only one standard mode of difficulty. When batting, you use the joystick to move around inside the batter's box and the button to swing. When you make contact, your player automatically runs to first. Holding the joystick left will make your runner and any other runners on base advance and pressing to the right will have them retreat. Holding the button down while moving the joystick will only affect the leadoff runner. When pitching, you use the joystick to move your pitcher on the mound. You press the button and move the joystick while doing so to select your pitch. Holding up on the joystick gives you a fastball, down gives you a sinker, left a screwball, right a curveball, and keeping the joystick center gives you a changeup. You can walk the batter after four balls, but you cannot hit the batter when pitching. When the ball is hit, it can go to one of five screens depending on the direction and the power. The five screens are the three outfields and the two infields, one for the first base side and one for the third base side. Fly balls can be tracked using their shadows. If it reaches the outfield, you are given control of the respective outfielder once the ball reaches the screen, although sometimes you will not have time to reach the ball in time to catch it, depending where it lands. If the ball targets the infield, you use the button in the joystick to pick a player to use. Depending on which side it's on, you press up for second base or shortstop, left for the third base or pitcher, right for the pitcher or first base, and down for the catcher on either side. Each player is given a horizontal strip they can travel in with invisible walls limiting their movement, so a ball near the bottom of the screen can only be reached by the catcher. This does lead to some moments where your selected player is very close to the ball but just can't get to it due to the invisible barriers. If you catch the ball for an out, the game switches to the next batter. If you don't catch the ball for an out, you can throw the ball to a selected base by pressing the button and holding the joystick in the direction of the base, so up for second, right for first, down for home, and left for third. Once the runner stops and the ball is held anywhere in the infield, the game switches to the next batter. The game ends after nine innings. It may go into extra innings in the case of a tie, but I never had a tied game after nine, so I'm not 100% sure. However, if the team batting second is winning after the top of the ninth, the game ends without them batting in the bottom of the ninth. Graphically speaking, the game looks really great for the 2600. The batting screen looks amazing with very large players, and I even think the smaller players look like cool little stick figures. Perhaps the only knock would be the game is not very colorful, using mostly greens and whites, and the teams look basically identical, but I still like the look of the game overall. The music and sound is also pretty good, with the end of the national anthem heard at the beginning and charge tunes played here and there, however the roar of the crowd sound might be a put down to some players. And of course this is a family friendly game as long as you're not betting on it. On eBay only new copies were selling and they were selling between $10 and $20 and as always those prices include shipping. So what did I think of Pete Rose Baseball? Well, there is a learning curve with choosing the infielders and the game can last a long time due to the fact that when you hit a ball, the gameplay slows down a bit 
to allow the fielders to get to the ball and throw it back to the infield in time. And the worst offender is when a home run is hit. You have to wait for all the runners to slowly run the bases. This may be a great rub in the face for an opponent when you're playing a two-player game, but after a few home runs, I was wishing there was a way to speed it up. However, complaints aside, this game is really fun, and it really pushes the 2600 to its limits. As a matter of fact, I enjoy this more than baseball on the NES, as well as home run on the 2600, which I also enjoy. So where am I going to rank Pete Rose Baseball? Well, it's really close to another sports game, Real Sports Volleyball, which I really liked and currently have ranked at number 12. And I'm going to give Real Sports Volleyball an edge since it plays quicker, but I do like Pete Rose better than Smurf, so I'm going to make it my new number 13 game. If you enjoy baseball games and 2600 games, Pete Rose Baseball is probably a safe bet. This video was released on the 26th of the month, and every 26th of the month, Atari.io, the website, celebrates Atari Day. If you enjoy Atari and other retro goodness, be sure to check out Atari.io and their forums as well where you might bump into me. If you enjoy retro-related videos, would you please click the like and subscribe buttons. You can now support the show through Patreon as well, just follow the link below. Also be sure to check out some of my many other videos covering Atari, Sega, Nintendo more with over 175 now posted there, something for just about any retro fan. Thank you guys for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the No Swear Gamer. Take care, everybody.